Welcome, uh, Ryan Crocker, Ambassador from Britain, where no doubt you're being, being able to absorb the international sentiment about the elections and about what's happening in, in the Middle East. So let's just get going with the first question. Is this a moment, do you think, where Israel and the region can step off the, the road to war or not? I think there is a moment, provided both sides and outside uh, parties, such as the United States, think small and think realistically. The death of uh, Sinwar clearly was a major blow to Hamas and a major uh, achievement for Israel, but it doesn't fundamentally alter the terms of the conflict. And the, similarly, the decapitation of the Hezbollah leadership in Lebanon uh, as we have seen very dramatically with that drone strike that hit the prime minister's residence, uh, has not curtailed their ability to fire missiles across the border. So I would urge all parties to think small, think in terms of a ceasefire that can save lives in Lebanon and among Palestinians in Gaza, and of supreme importance, give the chance to get the hostages back alive. But this is not the moment in which we see a fundamental shift in the dynamics of the Middle East. But can I ask you, because you say uh, the death of Sinwar hasn't fundamentally changed the dynamic on the ground. So I guess Israel would say the same thing, that, you know, yes, we've killed him, but the war continues. And it's really, they're going at it in an extremely, um, you know, sort of stepped up way. And likewise, in, in Lebanon, we heard today Israel saying we will strike Lebanon until Hezbollah collapses. Do you think it's possible for Israel to achieve those maximalist goals? You were ambassador to Lebanon when Hezbollah was formed, I think. I was uh, assigned to the embassy in Lebanon when Hezbollah was uh, formed as a result of the Israeli invasion in 1982 and the subsequent occupation of southern Lebanon. That was the birth of Hezbollah. And let's remember that that operation, that invasion in 1982, was called Operation Peace for Galilee, uh, intended to eliminate the threat of uh, armed action by the Palestine Liberation Organization across the border, uh, whether by infiltration or by artillery fire. Well, 42 years later, we are very far from Peace for Galilee, with 60,000 Israelis evacuated from their communities. It is. Uh, it was an Israeli occupation that gave birth to Hezbollah. Another Israeli occupation is highly unlikely to eliminate Hezbollah. Let me just put it that way. Uh, and yet, obviously, you've just mentioned that those 60,000 civilians and others have been moved from their places uh, of residence in northern Israel. And you know that Hezbollah started to fire on October 8th in support of Hamas. So what would you advise, having known so much and, you know, absorbed so much, not just in Lebanon, but, you know, we mentioned Iraq after the invasion, Afghanistan, all these places that have dealt with the attempt to change regimes and to stamp out militantism? Well, the harder one stamps, the more militants one seems to engender. So again, I think the imperative has to be every effort possible to get a ceasefire in the north, in Lebanon, and a ceasefire in Gaza. Uh, that is not going to be easy, but it is, I think, just possible. And I commend the Biden administration and Secretary Blinken in particular for making the effort at this delicate juncture. Uh, there are two different conflicts, uh, obviously. In, in Lebanon, there is the architecture for a, um, a cessation of hostilities that rests in UN Security Council Resolution 1701 that was passed after the Hezbollah-Israeli conflict of 2006. Uh, that would uh, call for a deployment of the Lebanese army throughout the south. Uh, the cessation of any armed action by any party that the Lebanese government, assisted by the United Nations interim force in Lebanon, would have the sole monopoly of power and that Israel would withdraw its forces. Uh, it might be that uh, Israel, because, again, the decapitation of the Hezbollah leadership has not stopped the rocket fire, uh, that Israel might be interested right now in a cessation of hostilities in which they could claim at least a victory of sorts by eliminating the command of their adversary. 
And it might be that Hezbollah and Iran behind them would also welcome a ceasefire at this point to regroup and reorganize. But again, uh, there should be no illusion on the part of anyone that uh, the killing of Nasrullah and so many of his other commanders fundamentally alters the will or the ability of Hezbollah to prosecute this, this uh, military campaign.